Which is better, a point source or a line source? Joseph in Morro Bay, California. I know Morro Bay. I used to live in a Tascadero. Uh, our company used to be in San Luis Obispo, just what, 20 miles from, from Morro Bay? Beautiful place. Love that place. Hey, Paul, I was wondering if you had any thoughts about point source loudspeakers versus line array loudspeakers in concert environments. I've never heard a line array system that sounded pleasing to me at concerts and always felt all the DSP mars the immediacy of the, trans the transient response. Yet steerable line arrays are increasingly common at concerts for reasons I don't understand. Uh, have I just been hearing poorly set up line arrays or is there something else going on? I'm a big fan of PS Audio and your YouTube channel always is very informative. Thanks. And that's from Joseph in um, Morro Bay. I am certainly not a sound reinforcement person. I don't really know squat <laughs> about um, sound reinforcement. I do know that steerable line arrays that use a lot of DSP, phase cancellation, and things are, are increasingly popular because they can direct sound in pretty full fidelity to specific areas of the audience at specific volume levels so that you get a very even sound throughout the entire stadium. So there are huge advantages that we can uh, gain from using steering, which is the, uh, and, and you'll see more and more and more of this. It's, I was just at a, the hell was I? Some airport, and you know, I'm I'm walking along down the terminal, and I hear this this this. I walk into a zone, and I'm hearing something, some somebody giving some ad or whatever the heck it was, and as I as I left, uh, it it was gone, and I whoa, I went back, and there it was, and I looked over, and there's a steerable line array, that is had a very real, well, realistic for, you know, an airport, but had a decent sounding system with somebody blabbering about some, something they want me to buy that I had no interest in, just spam, but, oh God, America. Um, anyway, <laughs> don't, don't get me going. Um, I'm getting spammed in an airport by a targeted line array. Now, in their defense, I have to say, it was much better than a blaring loudspeaker that's blasting this spam all over the, the airport and you, and you have to walk around and you know put, start putting earplugs in just so you can uh, get off, uh, uh, get away from all the sound, right? So line arrays can be um, pretty decent and can do a really good job and I suspect that's why you're seeing so many of them. Are there downsides to it? Oh yeah, oh sure. We aren't even close to fidelity. We're not talking here about anything remotely close to what we would have, you know, in a in a in a two-channel audio system of any kind of quality like you have here. But let's talk for a moment uh, about line sources versus point sources. And one of our engineers, Darren, always gets mad at me when I say this, which is there is no such thing as a point source because a point source, a true point source is an infinitely small area that can produce sound that fills this room. Now, we don't have such a thing. We don't have the technology for it. So about as close as you're going to get is a single driver, uh, and we would call that a point source with quotes around it. And while this isn't one, this is, a, an, this is called an EMIM, an electromagnetic induction um, mid-range. It's an infinity product. It's a, it's a, a planar. These, these are, these lines on here, if you can see them, are magnets, neodymium magnets, and behind that is a, a sheet of kapton, uh, which is a, a, like a plastic film, and, and on that is a copper voice coil, and that moves back and forth within the magnetic field, and we get mid-range sound. This covers, oh, about 100 hertz up to three kilohertz, more so. It's fairly, fairly broad range of sound that you can get out of this. And if this is all we had, or if this were capable of going up to say, I don't know, 15 kilohertz and down to maybe 60, you could call this a point source and get away with it, okay? 
This system happens to be a line source, very different than a point source. It's the exact opposite. So a line source is a large line of loudspeakers. These are all tweeters. This is, uh, these are mid-ranges. And off to the side that you probably can't see is a line of woofers. And the idea behind a line source is to make a cylindrical waveform that comes out. It's the exact opposite of a point source, which is starting from almost nothing to this, you know, to broadcast into the room and fill the room. So classic line source, if we had just one driver in this, that would be as close as we're going to get to a point source. But theoretically, point sources actually don't exist. I wish they did, but they don't. And in our new loudspeakers, we're going to have, you know, uh, uh, little guy, mama bear, papa bear, and that'll probably, the, our tall one will probably come up to about here. It'll be a line source. The second one down, the AN2, will be a quasi line source. And then the little guy will be the AN3. That will be a more traditional four-way loudspeaker that is combining all the drivers together is one waveform. More about that later. I hope that answers your question. I'm sorry I'm not more of an expert on public address systems and things, but I have a basic knowledge of it that I can share with you. Okay, thank you for the question. I will see you tomorrow and enjoy the, the, the sun and weather out in Morro Bay, California. Bye-bye. Thank you.